Hey everybody, Kyle here with iTalk TMS. Coming to you today to go over brain mapping, the importance of it, what it is. Um, today we brought in Kerry Rome from MagVenture to share with us and just let us know the importance of what, what it is we're doing. Thanks Kyle. Yeah, so I'm Kerry Rome from MagVenture and uh, I'm here today to explain brain mapping, what it is, why we do it in the context of TMS. So often when folks talk about brain mapping, they actually are talking about multiple things. It is important to understand where on the brain we're treating, and historically TMS has relied on a procedure where we define a specific location in the motor cortex to use as a landmark, which is then uh, important for identifying the treatment location. More recently, there have been other techniques that address this spatial component of motor mapping, but there's still a component of determining the correct amount of energy that's going to be used for TMS, which is part of the motor mapping procedure. So really, when people talk about motor mapping, there's actually two components. Identification of the spatial location on the scalp that produces a maximum motor response. And again, that was used as a landmark uh, in some procedures to then define the treatment location and then the determination of amount of, the, of energy that's required to get the patient's brain to react, which is an impor important parameter for the clinical treatment with TMS. So um, just uh, uh, conceptually, what we're really doing here is we're gonna, we're gonna stimulate the motor cortex, the part of the brain that's responsible for movement. And uh, we're gonna be stimulating the area of the motor cortex that's responsible for the contralateral hand. The motor cortex is somatotopically organized, meaning that different parts of the cortex correspond to different parts of the body. And uh, for TMS for depression, we're going to stimulate the area that leads to a twitch in the contralateral hand. So I can take the TMS coil, enable the device, and I can do that from the coil here. So go ahead and enable the device. And I can do this on myself, put this up on my head, stimulate, produce a response in my hand. I've been doing this for a long time, and I'm pretty quickly able to identify the part of the brain that causes uh, or, or that we need to stimulate to cause this response. So I'll do this on Kyle here as well, and we're going to look for a response from his right hand when we stimulate here on the left. So you can see this, and, and I think, you know, if you've done this for many, many years like I have, you're quickly able to identify where on the patient's head to look for this response. However, we do have a procedure that allows us to uh, identify some landmarks where we start this search. Typically, patients would wear a treatment cap when they get MagVenture TMS. And on this cap, uh, we basically uh, mark out some locations where we'd be looking for this response. It involves some measurements. So we take measurements of the patient's circumference of their head, the distance from the nasian to the inion, and from the tragus of one ear to the tragus of the other ear. These three measurements allow us to identify the vertex of the patient's head, and then we're gonna make some markings again on the cap to identify these locations where we'd be looking for this response. When you've been doing this for a while, you can sort of quickly identify uh, the vertex, come about a third, a third of the way down, and start your search in this region. Now, as I noted earlier, in the past, this location in the motor cortex that corresponds to the contralateral hand uh, twitch is known as the, the motor hotspot. And initially in 2008, when the first clearance for TMS was put into place, the company that got the clearance, Neuronetics, used what was called the five centimeter rule. So essentially the five centimeter rule stated that once you find the motor hotspot for the patient, and I'm gonna approximate this by this red target, you can use this as a landmark and then translate five centimeters anterior along a parasagittal plane to find the treatment location. And this was called the five centimeter rule. MagVenture actually builds a device that can be attached to our coil that allows one to identify where to treat using the five centimeter rule. However, in more recent years, the folks who are really experts with TMS, the Clinical TMS Society, recommend another approach for identifying the treatment location. This is called the BEAM method. It essentially relies on the same measurements we take earlier, the circumference, the tragus to tragus, nasian to inion. Using these three uh, values, you uh, input this into a web-based application, and the algorithm uh, spits out a few coordinates that allow one to identify directly the treatment location 
And this procedure is generally regarded as better because it, it takes into consideration the variability in the size of the patient's head. The five centimeter rule was good maybe for patients of a certain head size, but for patients who had very large or very small head size, the one size fits all approach of the five centimeter rule was not satisfying for a lot of users. And it's generally regarded these days that the beam method is the better approach for identifying the treatment location. Even more recent than the beam method, uh, recently FDA clearance has been put in place for neuro navigation systems. These devices allow the, uh, the treater to upload the patient's individual MRI or other forms of neuroimaging and then uh, define the target on the brain directly. And these would be the most sophisticated approaches uh, or approach to doing uh, a mapping of the brain. If you don't have the benefit of a neuro navigation system and the patient's own MRI, and, and most clinics don't, uh, we will uh, rely on either the five centimeter rule or the beam method. And we can um, go through this now and demonstrate how this, how this works. So again, typically with MagVentures TMS, the patient wear a cap. So I'm gonna put this cap on you, Kyle. Basically like this. And it's gonna be securely fitted on the patient's head. I'll just close the tabs. We will go ahead and uh, make some quick measurements here just to again, go through the motions. So we're identifying the distance from the nasion to inion and we're gonna take half that distance. It's 38, so I'm gonna mark 19 on the cap. And we're gonna make a measurement from the tragus of one ear to the tragus of the other through that marking. In this case, it's 40, so we're gonna mark 20 right in the midline of the cap there. This allows us to identify our vertex. And then for MagVenture's procedure, like I said, we do have a methodology that maps out on the cap where one is to look or start to look for the motor response. We can go ahead and mark the cap like this. And for the, treat and for the treatment location, we'll go ahead and mark the cap using the beam method. Uh, so we will measure the circumference. We already have the nasian to inion distance of 38 and the tragus to tragus distance of 40 and the circumference distance here is 59. So we'll go ahead and punch this into the beam calculator and it's gonna produce the X and Y coordinates. Okay, yeah, and the X coordinate is a distance along the circumference of the cap. In Kyle's case, it's 6.8. So we'll go and measure this off, 6.8. And then the y distance is a distance from the vertex down along the trajectory to that point on the, on the cap. And in this case, it's a distance of 10.1. And this allows us to identify the treatment location directly. Now, this is the uh, uh, recommended approach for identifying the treatment location. We still have the requirement to define how much intensity we're going to use with this patient. And this uh, requires us again to get back to the, the mapping procedure. So again, I'll enable my coil. And Kyle is just resting here, showing us the palm side of his hand so that we can clearly see a twitch when it's elicited from the stimulation. I'll go ahead and place the coil up on the patient's cap again and start some stimulations. Here we go, Kyle, three, two, one and a slight twitch there. And what I'll do is I'll move the coil around to see where we get the best response. There's a nice response there. There's a great response there. There's a beautiful response there. So once we find the region that gives us the maximum response, we're gonna stop moving the coil. This is the spatial determination of the motor hotspot. And then we're gonna start dropping the intensity to see what's the minimum amount of energy that we can use to get the brain to react and we're looking for just the slightest twitch in Kyle's hand. And I'm gonna ask you, Kyle, just to grip the hand once or twice and then release. Yep, and here we go. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but we're receiving a slight twitch here. So I'd say Kyle's motor threshold is in the range of about 40 or 41. So what we basically define here is the, arguably the two most important aspects for the treatment. The location that we're gonna deliver the stimulation as well as the energy. These two parameters arguably are the most important uh, parameters for success, and those are what's really defined when one does the, the motor mapping or the motor threshold determination procedure.
It's as simple as that, guys. That's Brain Mapping with MagVenture. Uh, for more information, please like, share, um, comment down below. And uh, as always, make it a great day.